Okay, so year nine, you should see now year nine lesson four in front of you. And it is on Nicholas Nickleby. And we'll come to who he is in a little bit of time. But just to kind of warm you up and to get you thinking, just consider if you could add any building to our school, what would it be? What would it contain? So for example, I absolutely love horses and love horse riding. So I probably would add an indoor sand school to our, to our school where we can ride horses and um, do show jumping and things like that. So you may think of things that you absolutely love. You might love, you might want a spa. You might want indoor football pitches. I don't know. Just consider what would you like in our school and why. Then, a more tricky question, which one would you take away and why? I don't know the answer to that one, I think, but maybe something comes to your head quicker than when it comes to mine. Um, so let's get on to Nicholas Nickleby. So Nicholas Nickleby, who on earth is he? So this is the third um, novel that Charles Dickens ever wrote. Um, Charles Dickens typically published his novels in instalments, um, in little bits, normally advertised in the newspaper, and then they were compiled together into one novel. Um, he first, the first instalment was on March 31st, 1838, and the last instalment was published on October the 1st, 1839. So rather like if you're watching a TV show which comes out once a week, um, similarly, people would have read a bit of Nicholas Nickleby once a week, and it would have been like their soap opera that they used to read on a weekly basis. And obviously this one took over a year for them to read. Um, so Nicholas Nickleby is the main character in the novel by Charles Dickens. Um, and he has to support his mum and his sister after his father dies. So he therefore, in Victorian England, it's typical that the duties um, of the father fall onto the son. And so he then became the man of the house. That's pretty much all I'm going to say about who Nicholas Nickleby is. And I really, really urge you to read the novel. It's very exciting. And he's quite a cool chap as well. Quite the charmer. Um, so then you've got an extract on Nicholas Nickleby. And let's read one of the questions first. It says, list three things that were described in the room. And then we're going to read the extract. And as we read the extract, you might want to get a highlighter ready or a pen to underline with. And you might want to highlight or you might want to underline three things that will have been described in the room. And then we'll go over them at the end. So the extract reads, it was such a crowded scene and there were so many objects to attract attention that at first Nicholas stared about him really without seeing anything at all. By degrees, however, the place resolved itself into a bare and dirty room. With a couple of windows, where a tenth part might be of glass, the remainder being stopped up with old copy books and paper. There were a couple of long old rickety desks, cut and notched and inked, and damaged in every possible way. Two or three forms, a detached desk for Squeers and another for his assistant. The ceiling was supported, like that of a barn, by cross beams and rafters, and the walls were so stained and discoloured that it was impossible to tell whether they had ever been touched with paint or whitewashed. So let's go back to the question. It says, list three things that were described in the room. Well, Firstly, on the first sentence, you get the words, there were so many objects. So, so many objects would be one thing. That Obviously, there were lots and lots of objects. Then go through, and you could have had anything else. Um, you might have put the fact that the windows were stocked up with old copy books and paper, because that's something that must have been in the room, the old copy books and paper. You might have put the long, old, rickety desks. You might have put... Um, the desk for squares, another one for his, his, his assistant. Oh, I struggled with all the his, his sounds then. Um, so you could have put any of those things. Um, then in your pack, you've got another couple of questions. 
to answer in regards to this paragraph. So I'll let you go and do those questions and then I'm going to move on to the next paragraph. Before moving on though, I just I think it's really important just to think what type of room's been described here? What what's the feeling you get of the room? Because as I read this paragraph, I was kind of thinking, well, if there's rickety desks in this room, if the windows are kind of patched up with old paper, and if it's compared, the ceiling's compared to something like a barn, then actually you get the sense that actually this is quite a poor person's room, that it's not lavish, it's not luxurious at all. Actually, it sounds like it's kind of like falling apart a little bit. So also, whilst you're reading, just think about what sense, what feel do you get of this room? Okay, I'm going to go on, but by all means, pause it now before answering the next two questions, and then I'll answer the next two questions. So, then you're asked to do in your packs a creative piece. And um, you are asked to design your perfect school. So you've just had a description of Nicholas Nickleby's school and you it's obviously was not perfect. And think back to that question that we had at the right at the beginning of this presentation where I said, what room, if you could have any room in the school whatsoever, or any new building, what would you create? And um, we've got an opportunity potentially to design at this moment what school look like. What is you know the government's trying to piece together? What is school going to look like in September? Is it going to be back to normal? Is it going to be very very different? So you get the opportunity now to design the perfect school, and it says in your packs for you to draw it. <laughs> so you could design like your perfect classroom, what you think is brilliant. Um, and label it and then write a paragraph describing it. So I've got here Mrs. Boxall's perfect school. Um, I won't say too much, otherwise I might get in a lot of trouble of what I would consider a perfect school. However, as I've said, one thing I absolutely love are horses and I love animals. I just love being outside and I love nature. So one thing I would definitely have in a school is some awesome animals. I would definitely have horses, I would definitely have some stables, I'd definitely have a riding school. Um, I probably are quite like goats, so maybe have a little pen with some goats on. Um, I quite like chickens, and they're very useful, they lay eggs, so probably have some chickens there. Um, and maybe some other more exotic animals, maybe some parrots, they're always good because they repeat things. Giraffes, giraffes are very, you know, as we're describing our perfect school here, might as well go all out, might as well have a giraffe pen in there as well. Um, so I would probably describe a very, very outdoors classroom um, where all the learning was centered about around the animals and outside. I've gone full hog crazy, you know, out there. So be really creative with this, with this in designing what you want it to look like, what are people gonna learn there, and writing a really descriptive paragraph. Cool, thank you, bye.